If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Monday, June 10th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. In mid-May, the University of North Carolina at Wilmington swimming and diving teams were part of a list of athletic programs that were recommended to be cut at the school. But about a week ago, the swimming and diving program got a stay of execution, as it were, and will be back to go for more success at the Division I level. Today in the Finice Monitor, we will talk to two members of the women's swim team about the journey the teams have faced and what lies ahead. Sophomore Sarah Smith and senior Carly Tanner join me now from Wilmington. Ladies, good to see you. How are you? Good, how are you, how are you doing? Doing great, thanks. So uh, Sarah, you're a sophomore, as I said. Uh, it must be great to know that you'll have a team to be going back to in the fall. Yes, it is. It's great. Especially only halfway through the swimming career, I was not ready to be done yet. I'm sure. Um, and Carly, as I said, uh, you're a senior. Um, I know your college career is now over, but it must be hap you must be happy to know that um, the program that, that you have spent four years with is going to live on. Definitely. I mean, with this program, once you're an alumni, you're part of a family that never goes away. So. Saving the program was definitely a huge deal to me, even though I was done swimming. And I like your shirts there. I guess initially it said, save you NCW swimming and diving, then you added the D. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. It, it keeps the, the, the shirts going on. Yes, it does. <laughs> well, I would imagine you guys went through pretty much the whole spectrum of emotions in May, from you know anger, disappointment, to just utter relief. Uh, tell us what it's been like for you guys through this whole process. Um, well, I guess it was kind of a roller coaster. Um, we find out the news and we're immediately just kind of in shock and disappointed, angry, worried, nervous, any kind of emotion you can think of. And um, to be honest, for me, I, um, I, I, I can't speak for Carly, but for me, that kind of got set on the back burner. Immediately, we just started a campaign and started, instead of feeling negative, we were feeling hopeful. We knew, but we had everything. Um, to save our team and we just kind of put our stress and worries on the back burner and just kept staying hopeful, staying positive, definitely. hoping for the best. And if anyone did, which I definitely did, have those moments where we were just like, there's no hope, there's no hope, we all kind of pulled together and picked up, picked up everyone when they hit those points. So um, it was definitely a team effort and we definitely just all came together as one to keep the positivity going and just try to change, you know, change anything we could. Was there any indication that this was coming before that report was released? We had heard rumors that um, that there was the committee out. Um, we knew about the committee because they had a meeting with um, the Student Athletic Advisory Committee members, where there's like two from every team, and um, they just kind of talked loosely about cuts and adding programs. And so we kind of knew that there was something going on, but we weren't expecting five teams on the table. So um, it was really just a shock, really. It was a lot bigger than we thought it was going to be. Was, were you given any kind of ultimatum as far as, you know, you need this many signatures, you need to raise this much amount of money for the team to be saved? Not at all. Um, the petition, uh, I, I started out about an hour after we found out. We all, the entire team is just all of a sudden on the phone, on Facebook, talking to each other, finding out exactly what we need to do. Um, we kind of collaborated, myself and a few others, to put together this document, this petition, and get it out as soon as possible. That, um, that was simply an initiative. We had no direction given by the IARC or our athletic director or anything. We kind of just took everything into our own hands and hoped for the best. We hoped that even though they didn't give us a goal, they didn't give us an amount of signatures, they didn't give us an, an amount of money to raise no matter how many times we asked. We just hoped that we could overwhelm them enough or do enough, make good enough impression to save us. And so, you know, this really did reach out across the country. A lot of swimming teams 
um, really reached out and showed their support. You even got um, a tweet or two from Ryan Lochte. What were your thoughts as this was going on and all this support was flooding in? It was great. I mean, it was awesome to have all these Olympians. Um, we had Derek Torres, Jana Evans, you know, like you said, Ryan Lochte, um, just retweeting and spreading the word. And I think a big, big part of it was just, you know, after seeing teams like Clemson and Maryland get cut, I think the Sony world was just kind of like, you know, come on, like, you know, if, if 12 conference championships on the men's side can't see it, save a program, then, you know, really? So I think people were really just fed up about hearing about successful teams getting cut. So um, we definitely played into that and, and got a world of support, which was amazing. I, for one, thought it was awesome. Once we got Ryan Lochte to reach out to tweet us, excuse me, followed by all of the other celebrities, I, I just remember thinking as soon as he retweeted us, I thought, wow, we might actually have a shot. If an Olympian is recognizing our cause and helping us spread it around, we may actually have a shot. And that was amazing. Yeah, I'm learning. <laughs> no better supporter of anything than Ryan Lochte, I would imagine, these days. <laughs> so, um, Sarah, are you still there training this summer? Yes, I am. We, um, I decided to stay here this summer. I went home last summer. Um, decided to stay here. I wanted to stick with the team, and especially, I'm especially glad that I did now when all this came up. Um, obviously, I had no idea that was coming when I was making this decision a few months ago. Um, but it, it turned out for the best. Certainly, I got to be here with my team. I got to take part in the fight, and I got to be here when we were saved. I got to be with everyone and share it with them. And Carly, as I said before, you're done with your college eligibility. Are you still uh, training with the team? I actually did go to practice this morning. <laughs> um, it's kind of off and on. I, I really just am in love with the sport and I'm in love with this team. And, you know, whenever I'm feeling down about myself, I just get up and go to practice in the morning. And I feel a lot better because it's my family. And um, it's not something that I'm completely ready to give up yet. So I'm just kind of hanging out and training every once in a while. And, um, I'm sticking around in Wilmington because it's become my new home, so um, it's definitely, definitely a family. Well, you must have some kind of motivation for yourself after getting to compete at the NCAA Championships. What a thrill that must have been to represent UNCW. It definitely was. I was so proud to represent the, uh, the university and also the CAA just because um, when I was there, there were only two other girls from the CAA at the NCAA. So it was really incredible to kind of bring recognition to one of the smaller conferences. Now, I've, I've read some comments on some blogs online that said because UNCW is not a major player in Division I swimming and diving, it wouldn't be a huge loss for collegiate swimming if you guys were cut. What do you have to say to those people? Uh, I have to say they must never have been swimmers. I don't care what pe you know what people think of our school not being a big you know a big dog in Division One. What it takes to be a swimmer is truly amazing. And like I said, I, we don't need to be a big dog. We're we're amazing for doing the sport already. If people think that that's what matters, you know, prestige is what matters, then. They should not be in that position to make that call, in my opinion. And something I kind of love about this university is there are no frills. It's just a lot of hard work. So when we do have our men win their 12th in a row and I go to NCAA, it's kind of like, you know, we did it even though we, we don't have, you know, new tennis shoes every year. So not saying anything bad about schools who do. I'm just, you know, proud of that. We, you know, we're no frills. We're just hard work, so. We have very little scholarship money and very little return, and that's why we're proud to be a small school, because we can do all this, and we can do it with a, with a smile on our face. Sounds like it uh, was part of the reason you guys were able to work so hard to keep it. You, you knew that um, you had to work hard to get where you are, you have to work hard to stay alive. Definitely. Well, as you said, you guys are still swimming. I would imagine workouts are just looking so different now that you know that there is a future for the team now. Yes, I think um, the next morning, I don't think I've ever been more excited to wake up and go swim at 6 in the morning. <laughs> Even during that practice, I went and did a belly flop in the pool just because I could. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. Um, I, I would imagine the coach would have been able to give you a thousand fly. you like, sure, coach, no problem. <laughs> I think everyone Absolutely. is just happy to be back in the pool and happy to know that we're definitely here. So It definitely helped. Um, you know, we were a great team already. We had a great positive attitude, but this more than ever is going to help us drive home the point that anytime we have a negative thought, we just have to think about how we almost didn't have a team anymore. 
and how we've never been more grateful for it. Is UNCW swimming and diving going to be around for good? Is it like a, you know, you have two years or do you know how long that this reprieve is going to last? Um, I think, well, they definitely didn't say anything about years. They just said that we're keeping all the programs. So as of now, I think it's for good. Um, I do think that there are some budget issues, but I'm proud of the chancellor for making the decision to not take it out on the student athletes and kind of reevaluate how we can get more donations and more, um, you know, just support from the community and things like that. So I'm very grateful. We all are very grateful that the chancellor decided to go a different route with, you know, helping with the budget. So I think that if he continues down that road, um, I think that the sport is safe. And now the men get a chance to go for 13 conference titles in a row. Um, are we looking at another NCAA qualifier for UNCW women? We sure hope so. <laughs> it's always on our minds. It's, as it should be. Um, before we go, I want to talk about that background behind you, all those handprints. I'm hoping you can um, maybe pan around and kind of just show us what it is and give us the story behind it. Well, each year um, when incoming freshmen come, the seniors or the rising seniors or rising up the class, excuse me, make a sign for the incoming freshmen to hang up in their suite, which is where we live freshman year. Um, this is actually not the one for my year. Um, since there's only one, not everyone can keep one. My roommates and I made this one because obviously we wanted to be, you know, we wanted that team banner as well. Um, we just had all the girls in our grade make some neon handprints and have it be really cool. And if you look along the bottom, can you let her? If you look along the bottom, it says best four years of your life. That's pretty much our team slogan. Every year, we put you know we put it on everything we give to the freshmen, best four years of your life, because it really is. I've only been here two years, and it's been the best two years of my life, and I know the next year are going to be even better. Well, definitely. You definitely had to make that logo happen, Car uh, Sarah and Carly. I mean, Sarah would have been only just two years of your life, and um, definitely didn't want to have that, that banner not come true for you. Exactly. <laughs> Well, ladies, thank you so much for joining us. And again, congratulations on um, saving the team. I would imagine you're going to get some calls from some other uh, swim teams around the country. Every year we hear about these pro programs being cut, unfortunately, and I'm sure you guys are going to become the, the blueprint of how social media and, and um, just downright um, inspiration and drive can, can help save a program. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have fun this summer. <laughs> thank you. All right, so those were two members of the University of North Carolina at Wilmington Swimming and Diving Teams. And that will wrap up today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. Be sure to stay with SwimmingWorld.com for all the latest news in aquatic sports. And follow us as well on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.